start back here, get my intermediate target. It's going to be right there. Now I'm coming in. There's my intermediate target right there. Set that club face down at that spot. Make sure I'm lined up properly. Here we go. I don't have to worry about losing this to the right because all I got to do is make sure I hit this solidly and start it on the line I intend. Here we go. Oh, yeah, solid shot there. Not a lot of curve. Kind of going right at the, whoa, whoa, wow, it went in the hole. Oh, my God. Yo, oh, wow. Oh, oh, that swear, that drink's on you. Holy cow. Hey, Greg, you got to play that again. You got to play that again. 11 years I've been doing this, and I've never done this before. We took the flag out of the hole. Watch this thing with the tracer on. Bink, bink, right in the hole. Holy cow. All right, hold on a second. I got to calm down. The sixth hole is our first par five on the golf course. It's 523 yards. What does that mean? All the players will be able to reach this in two, provided you can get it in the fairway. What's out there in the fairway? Well, there's a bunker down the left-hand side. The rough is obviously going to be very thick. And this fairway releases towards the water once in the fairway. Now you're hitting to a blind green protected by bunkers. It's very accessible. And I think we're going to see a lot of birdies here come U.S. Open. I'm Michael Breed, so excited for the 119th playing of the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. I'm going to take you through all 18 holes, give you some insights into what the players are going to face and make it a little bit more enjoyable for you to watch the U.S. Open. This green is kind of pitching almost the way the 17th hole at Pebble Beach is pitched. There's obviously no water on the left-hand side, but you can see it almost looks like a shoe print. As you go there, you can see the heel right there. That's where the hole location is, and it's going back on an angle, about a 45-degree angle. What does that mean? Well, it means that that's almost like having two separate greens. I can get a shot that's pin high to this front right portion of the green, but if I don't hit it at the flag, now I'm going to get into that bunker, and I've got a very difficult bunker shot. I'm expecting to see some really good scores here. I think there will be some birdies, but I also think you might see a few double bogeys. Now, I'm going to give this a shot. I got this thing at playing, what are we playing today? 198. So it's just a little bit under that 200 yard. Got to hit this solidly. Oh yeah. Very solid shot there. Is it going to catch the green? Just kicks off the edge. Settle down. Okay. A good shot for me. One that I'm very happy with. And I know the players will be happy to find the floor here. Find the dance floor. Give themselves a birdie opportunity. It's going to be a wonderful hole to watch. Welcome to a new breed of golf live. I'm talking from the Morgan Franklin Transformation Center. Excited to be here to help you improve your game. Couple of quick things that we want to try to take care of. The first one is the poker chip. You know it, you love it. You got to get it. Six bucks. Just send an email to me at a new breed of golf. As many of you have done, but we always have new viewers and we want to make sure that you all know. Six bucks. You got five choices right now. You can get any one, or you can get all of them. I don't know how many we have in stock, but we've got a pile. If you're interested in getting them, no problem. Send an email to me. As well, I want to remind all of you that I'm going to be a part of these North Coast golf shows that are taking place over the next uh, few weeks. One will be in Philadelphia. That's on Saturday. Um, and then the following Saturday, I'm going to be down in D.C. And then a few Saturdays after that will be in New York. Um, all you got to do is go to North Coast golf and travel shows.com or if you want we'll, we'll put up the information here and make sure you come on out say hi shake a hand it would be it's great to see you it's great to meet you i love going to these events and getting a chance to to talk a little bit about like what we're doing today talk a little bit about some of the things that are of interest maybe jordan spieth wins this week who knows what's going to take place before we get to what we're going to talk about today i want to introduce you to the the people behind the scenes of course steve gibbs and Greg Ducharme, there's Gibbsy on the left-hand side sporting that very nice top. And then he gives the, you know, it, it's a nice little, it was a nice little hand pass that you gave right there, Gibbsy, over to, thank you, to, thank you. to Greg Ducharme. That was well done. So, um, all right, I want to tell you, tell you what we're going to do today. And we talked on the show on A New Breed of Golf on Sirius XM. We talked about 
the importance of impact. Impact is critical for success. Obviously, if your impact is poor, doesn't matter what your plane looks like, doesn't matter what your weight distribution is like. If you have a poor impact position, you're going to get poor results. And so what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how you can use cameras to assist you with improving your impact and improving certain parts of the golf swing. So impact being one of those, obviously also two, what you're doing with the club face and the backswing and the value of a face on camera versus a down the line camera. So Gibbsy, if you could, let's give us a down the line camera, what we call this to be camera one. And in this line, there are certain things that we're looking at. And then of course, in camera two, this face on, there are certain things that we look at. So we had a little meeting and uh, I, I ran it by, by the board and asked, what are two of the, the most important parts of the face on that we use? Uh, we give it a five and we got two things for you that are going to help you. And then of course, when we go to this down the line camera, what are two things that you're, that you really want to pay attention to in the down the line view that are going to help you improve uh, your game. And so what you need to appreciate is what we're going to talk about is not going to include my favorite topic in golf instruction, address positions. We're not talking, we're assuming you have a great address position. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about certain things that we look at in motion in the face on view and the down the line view. And then the other thing that I want to remind you of is later in the show, we're going to get to some of your questions. So any questions that you've got, please make sure that you uh, share them with, with Greg and then he will um, he will relay them to me, and I'll answer them. Uh, if they have something to do with what we talk about today, great. And if they don't, no problem, great as well. And then finally, what I want to do before I get into this is remind you to tell friends of yours about what we're doing over here. You got to tell them, jump on over to YouTube. You got to follow us. You got to like us. You get up to date with all the, the instructional content that we're producing here to try to help you play your best golf. So let's first talk about this camera view and the down and, and the face on view, by the way. Now, what is the number one thing that you struggle with in the, in the uh, golf swing in a face on view? And it has to do with your takeaway and specifically how you are using your body or you're not using your body. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to explain to you about what I look at when I'm using this camera view down the line or our face on rather. And what I want to remind you as well is, is that when you, when you are using this camera, you want to position in such a way so that when you make a swing, the golf club never leaves the camera. So when we come through, you can see how you can see the entire club all the way through. And if I need to adjust it, well, then all I'll do is gives you just lift it up just a little bit. So we're just going to take camera two and we're going to Bring it up to, there you go. That's plenty of space now. And now I've got tons of room over here. And that club never leaves. It's, a mo it's, it's, it's vital for you to be able to see everything your body is doing and everything the club is doing because that's how you're going to be able to compare. And what I would recommend is that when you get, when you're swinging really well, videotape your swing in a face on and a down the line. And that becomes sort of your benchmark of your motion. And then if you go off, now you shoot your, your face on your down the line and you compare it to what you were doing. You go, ah, you know what? I'm sliding my body too much. I'm not turning my upper body enough. So you have a, a, an ability to compare and then look at it. We go, oh, okay, this is what's different. And now I'm going to go and chase that, that good body turn. So I'm going to make sure that my body is working properly. So let's talk about a couple of things that, that we like to look at. And I'm going to show you by using the V1 system. So we're going to go to... Let me go to camera two, which is this. I'm going to record this. And then I'm going to make what we would call a, a poor motion. First thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at, am I turning or am I sliding? And the sliding will happen with lower bodies, most, most typically lower bodies. And if the, if the body is sliding, the lower body sliding, the upper body isn't going to be turning all that much. So I'm going to give you a little... A little slide here. So this is what we're going to see. We're going to see this and that. Now, I'm going to show you how. Oops, I didn't get it. Gibbsy, let's try it again. So now I'm going to do that again. It, it, it stalled out because I took too much time talking to you. So here we go. Slide and then through. Okay. Now. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use this drawing tool and I'm going to put a line on that back hip and then on the forward hip. So undo that because I'm settling in now to there. Now, what when you make a good motion, what you want to be able to do is turn the hips within those parameters there. I don't want my hip to get outside of the outside part of my foot. I want to try to keep that the outside of my hip inside the outside part of the foot. And because the outside part of the foot is starting out here, it's already way out there. You've got a little bit of leeway for what we would call a rotational slide, but the slide without any rotation, well, what you're going to see here, it, it doesn't look good. And it's obviously not effective. The ball speed on that particular shot was 88 miles an hour. So what happens here is this. See that, that slide into there? So that's me trying to slide. And now I've gone way outside of the outside part of the foot. So I draw a line up here at a 90 degree angle, which is right there. And you can see how my knee, my thigh, my hip are all outside. Now, what's also happened as a result is my upper body has made, I'll say a little bit of a turn, but you can see there's a bend in the lead arm. So what happens to the body, and this is amazing how it works, there's a, there's a compensatory motion that takes place to allow for a, a, a poor performance in another spot. And so you might look at this and go, yeah, you're bending your, your arm. Well, the reason why you're bending your arm is because the lower body has not turned properly. It has, it has gone into a slide motion and the transfer has been lateral instead of rotational. And when you get into a lateral transfer, now all of a sudden things are, are start to show up in other parts of the body. And it's clear right there as we go through this that the, the lead arm has bent, and now we're very narrow. We don't have any width in that backswing, and when you don't have any width, now all of a sudden it's hard to really generate some club head speed. So now let's see what happens as we start to come through here. Now there's a slide, but when I come through here, see how far away my hip is from that, that lead line? So now I'm way, way, way behind, and now at, at impact, my club shaft here is about, that's about a two degree shaft lean. So because my body has not worked properly, now all of a sudden I lose that impact position, which is something that we talked about on the show today. Impact, how to improve impact. Well, you what you do is you've got to set up impact by moving correctly in the backswing. So let me go back over here. Set this ball in the, right spot there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what we'll call a proper turn. Okay. So the, the lower body is now going to turn inside this, we'll call it a barrel. That's what a lot of people talked about, Ernest Jones and others. So here we go here. Now, good swing here. This one is right at the target. It's just too far, but it went right where I wanted it to go. So now So now we're ready for launch. So now I'm going to draw this line on the outside there, draw this line on the outside there. And what you're going to notice, at least what I should do, and I don't know that I did this, but what you're going to notice is there's going to be a little bit of a, because I've turned in the, in the backswing properly, I'm going to be able to, to move a little bit forward in the, in the downswing. And my lead hip should get past that line that I just drew over here on your right. So club goes back. So now let's just compare these two. And this is always fun to look at. So over here on this swing, and we'll draw this line that's right about here and draw this line that's right about there. And then we go up to the top. Now, what you can see is both of the golf clubs in the backswing are about at the same angle. So the club has gone back about the same distance. Those are similar. That's about the only thing that's similar right now. Look at how the body has, has gone lateral in its slide versus rotational in here. Look at the space between 
that hip and that line versus that hip and that line. Tremendous difference right there. And the other thing is, is that when you look at this, look at how stable this trail knee is right here versus this trail knee right here. Completely different. Okay? And then finally, I, I pointed this out to you before. Look at what's going on with this arm. There's no bend in that arm there. This arm here is bent exactly the way I said it was the last time we talked about this. So now my position, my width in my backswing is much, much better there. And by the way, that shot that I hit, 121 miles an hour of ball speed there, that one there flew about 181 yards. So it was a really good strike, good rotation. I've got a good platform right here. I'm able to use the ground the way I want to use the ground. And so now what happens is we now start to go down and you can see how the body is moving forward and down. So you're going to see as I'm finishing the backswing, the lower body is now kicking in. It starts to close the gap between where it was at a dress and where it was at the top. So now I'm right there. Now I'm posting up. So you're going to start to see this lead leg kind of straighten out. And then the fun part is going to be this. There, it's straightening right there. So here is, let's erase all this stuff. Here's my shaft lean at literally just pre-strike. That's a half an inch before the strike. That shaft is leaning at about 12 degrees. Go over here. We start to go down into this one. And again, we're talking a little bit about impact right here. And now. So eh, it just doesn't quite catch it. So this is a little bit less, and that's 85 degrees. So that has a five degree shaft lean. This one has a 12. The one on the left has a 12 degree shaft lean. What does that mean? Well, that means that I've got more speed. I've got less loft. So this ball is going to really pierce out the way, the way you hope it to, to go. And more importantly, I'm going to strike the golf ball before I strike the ground. And so in this one, on the right-hand side with the poor lower body movement, now all of a sudden, let me get that out of the way, now I'm going to hit the ball, uh, I'm going to hit the ground before I hit the ball, it's going to launch very, very high, and look at where that, that position of that golf club is when my hands are still in the thigh there. Now come over here, and now all of a sudden, what you're going to see is, is that this golf ball is coming out quite a bit lower piercing out like that at about 17. This one here is piercing out at about 23 or 24. So that ball is going to launch higher. It doesn't have the same flight characteristics. It's going to get destroyed by the wind. And of course, it only went 125 yards. So this one was almost 60 yards farther because I was able to, to create a good strike. And it all boils down to what I'm doing with that lower body. Now, if we look at what the bodies look like through impact, so let's go over to here and let's go over to, that's uh, about, I'm going to say it's about there. And when you start to look at this, look at the, the one, the one obvious thing here is this, look at that trail leg versus this trail leg, totally different use of the ground. So now my, my right foot is pushing off the ground. The knee is moving towards the target. I've actually squatted into that position there. And what you're going to see is as a result of that squat right here, there's the top of my head. It's right on the top of the screen. This one here is right up there. So it's a little bit higher. So there's a lot of things that have taken place. Why? Because I rotated my body properly. And that's one of the things that I'm doing when I'm using this face-on view. Now, the other thing that I'm using the face-on view for, and I'll go back over to here and then pull this up, is this right here, impact position. Impact position, I want to see those hands ahead of the golf ball. I want to see my, my hands sitting in the lead thigh right here. I want to see this trail arm on an angle in front of the golf ball. So if I were to extend this all the way down, that would be pointing down to the ground in front of the golf ball. I don't want the trail arm to be pointing straight down. When it's, when it's straight, I don't want it to be at impact pointing behind the golf ball. If I get that, I've got a real problem. Okay? So I'm looking at what I'm doing with impact right there. And so I check 
what's going on with the rotation of the body, lower body, upper body? How am I turning within the barrel? And then to that end, how am I getting that shaft lean? Am I getting the shaft lean the way I want? And what I can tell you is with a six iron, I want somewhere between nine and 12 degrees of shaft lean. That's kind of what I'm trying to get here without trying to uh, create different types of shots. And when I do that, I'll typically get a launch angle that's somewhere around 16, 17, 18 degrees of launch. Now I'm not a PGA Tour player, so I'm not going to have that type of precision. But at the same time, if you can get your shaft lean to be with a six iron, let's just say you can get it to be seven or eight degrees, you're going to create a lot, um, a lot more distance and a lot more club head speed in the in the uh, shot that you're that you're hitting. And depending upon what happens with your strike, most typically your strike will be better. You're going to get more ball speed. So club head speed will equate to ball speed when we have a good strike. And obviously that good strike, that good impact is going to come from what does impact look like? I want to look at in a face on view, what I'm doing with that shaft lean. I want it forward. I don't want it backward. The only time I'm going to want it backward is if I'm going to hit a flop shot, maybe a bunker shot, then I might have it straight up and down or a little bit of the club head um, in front of the, 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 the hands. But for the most part, that's not what I'm trying to do. Really not trying to do that. Okay. Now, and again, if you've got any questions about what we've talked there, no problem. Just please get in the chat and share, share your question with us and we'll, we'll get to it. Now I want to talk about this camera one. So let's go to a camera one view. And again, what we're talking about here has nothing to do with what we do at address. What we're talking about now is when the club is in motion, what are the two things that are sort of at the top of the list for me when I'm using this camera angle? So I'm no longer going to be paying attention to what I'm doing with the lower body, what I'm getting with the turn, all that other stuff. I do pay attention to other things, but my two most important things are going to be, what am I doing with this club face in the backswing? And then what am I doing with the shaft in the delivery? So I want to show you what the delivery position is here, okay? So let me record this, and I'm going to make a swing for you, and then I'm going to show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. So up here again. All right, so now another good strike. That one actually had even more club head speed. That one there, that ball flew 183. Now... Let me squeeze up here. I'm going to show you some of the cool things that that this V1 system can do, by the way. So what I'm going to do is make that impact. I'm going to trim this video just like that. And now all of a sudden, I can go to these positions. So what I'm going to do when I take the club back is I look at this position right here. This position is uh, what we call first parallel. When the shaft of the golf club is very, very, um, well, you can't see it. So when I draw a circle around here like that, I can draw a small circle. And I'll show you what a big circle looks like here in just a second. But when you're looking at what's going on, you're going to pay attention to how you're going to deliver this, this club. What you want to make sure of is, is it in the positions that you want? So we're looking at the shaft, as I said before, what's going on with the shaft, and then what's going on with the face. So right here, this club face is in a position where it's on a, slight angle downward. So if I draw a perpendicular line off of that, it's pointing that way. Many of you, when you come through to this position here, the face of the golf club is sort of like that. It's about five degrees open. And then when you start to go like that, come off perpendicular to that, it's going to be coming up in this number here. And now it's pointing up into the air. We want that club face to be pointing down to the ground at some point, not up into the air. And that will keep that club face in a little bit more closed position, which is something that you all really should be paying attention to. The majority of the individuals that uh, that I'm talking to today, uh, your club face is open in, the, in, in your golf swing. That does not mean necessarily that you haven't figured out how to close it in the downswing. But what it does mean is that your club face get, tends to get a little open, and now all of a sudden it's in compensation city. So, I'm paying attention to, to what's going on with, with that golf club right there, that club face. Now we start to move on up to the top of the swing. When we get up to the top of the swing, and I said to you before, I'm paying attention to the club face. Here's what I'm paying attention to at the top. So I'm going to draw this line right here. What I want is I want all of the mass of the, the head of the club 
to be on this side of the shaft. I don't want, so in the downline view, I don't want this club head to be, I'll hold it up like that. I don't want it to be on the back side of the shaft. I want it to be right there on the forward side of the shaft. So when I look at this position at the top, I go, okay, that looks really good. Now I'm going to come down into this delivery position right here. And so now when I'm in the delivery position, which is more or less last parallel, and this just missed it just a little bit. But what you can see is right here that that shaft of that golf club is slightly, it's slightly from the inside. That's not what I'm trying to do. And I'll show you what I'm trying to do in my golf swing, but that is ever so slightly from the inside. And if I go back a frame, eh, this is actually a little bit better. So there's, that's ever so slightly from the inside. And what that means is, is that my golf ball from here is going to start out to the push side. It'll be to the, to the right. Okay. For a right-handed golfer. So this position, this what we call delivery position, is if you want to hit a draw, you want to see more shaft here. So it's going to be hands, shaft, club head, that way, club head inside the hands. And when we get to where we're hitting cuts, which I'll show you what that'll look like, the head of the golf club will be out over in here. And the, the, the shaft will now be pointing over to the pull side like that. Okay, so I'm looking at that. And then again, I'm looking at the club face. So the club face right here, that's that's pretty much perpendicular to the ground. It may be a shade closed. It's a shade closed. So now I'm coming down here with body rotation. Club comes from the inside. Center strike. So I love that. Now, Gibbsy, let's just walk with me with camera four over here, okay? Because I want to go up to the number. So let's just pan with me with camera four up here. That's great. And now let's look at the numbers of what were delivered here. And what you can see is I told you that that club face was a fraction shut. We, we obviously saw that ball went pretty far. And Greg, if you could put a trace on that, that would be great. But what you can see in my horizontal launch is that started ever so slightly to the push side. Okay, so it's ever so slightly to the push side. And then it had just a little bit of, of hook spin. Now, I'm going to make a swing on this one where I'm going to hit the ball, but I'm going to do the exact opposite of what I just did. And you're going to see how things change. So come on over to the hitting area, if you could. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the this on record. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an enormous pull cut. So I'm going to take the club back. I'm going to fan the face open. And I'm going to work way across like this. And we're going to hit a pull cut here. So... Here we go. Okay. Now, that ball started one and a half degrees to the left. Yeah, you can pull that up. It started one and a half degrees to the left, and it had an inordinate amount of side spin, 1,353 side spin. So right here, there's our side spin at 1,353. There's our horizontal launch at 1.5. Uh, degrees there. Now, let's take a look at what this motion looked like, and we'll do a little comparison of these two. So I got I to gotta do a little trimming. So I'm going to get over here. I'm going to hit this ball. So there's impact, pretty center hit. Now let me trim it up. Then we're going to split this. And now we're going to go over to here, set impact right there. And now we're going to take this club back. So here goes the club in the backswing. So club face is in that position. And all we're doing is, is looking at the position of the club face right here. So club face right here. So you can see the angle of the club face right there is like that. Ever so slightly down. Club face position right here is more or less pointing up into the air. And you can see how the hands are different. And now all of a sudden what you can see is, and I'm going to go on the left-hand side here, just one more click. So let's go here. And now I start drawing a, a circle around this. And you can see how big that is versus over here. 
I draw a circle around this, and you can see how small those circles are. Can't see any of the shaft on the right-hand side. There's a ton of shaft on the left-hand side, okay? All right, so now we already know there's a different motion taking place. Arms are working completely differently in the backswing because the face is opened up. So as we spin the face open, forearms twist, a lot of things take place. Club is now in a in a what we'll call a poor position. Now we get up to the top here and a little bit of a different position with the club shaft and certainly the face of the golf club is slightly different. What you can see is that, that this toe is hanging a little bit more down than this toe. So let's get out of here. Now watch what happens when I start working over the top of this shot that started one and a half degrees to the left and had 1,350 RPMs of right spin. So hands work out. You see how the hands are working out now. Shaft of the golf club and the hands, they're right between my shoulder and my ear. When we start going over to the to this other one that we hit a little draw, now all of a sudden the hands are right in the shoulder. They're not between the shoulder and the ear. They're right in the shoulder, okay? So now let's look at what our delivery position is going to look like here. I mean, it's, it's just, it's so incredibly different. And I'll show you what I mean by where the shaft is. So I'm going to try to set similar shaft positions here. Those are roughly similar shaft positions. And what you can see is over here, this club shaft is now in the bicep. This club shaft is going through my shoulder. And all that means is delivery position is going to be completely different. You don't need to know all this. All you need to know is how different these look right now. And then when we get to delivery, it ultimately shows itself right there. Okay. So now let's go back over to this. We're going to come down into the delivery position here. Club shaft is slightly from the inside. Now we come over here and watch what happens with this one. Shaft of the golf club now is that's above the hands. That's about parallel right there. That's a little bit a little bit closer to parallel. And you can see where that shaft is pointing versus where this shaft is pointing. Totally different. Hands are still right at the kind of at where the, the sim meets the, the mat. They're right about there. Okay, so you can see that. But what also is is clear is where the shaft is pointing so now watch what happens from these deliveries so if somebody comes to me if you send me a video and you go hey michael what do you think of my delivery position and I, this is all i see i see this picture versus this picture i'm going to go okay do do not do this one over here the one on the right because this is going to be a much better shot shape you're going to hit it more solidly you're going to hit it farther you're going to have less less side spin over here I would say, okay, you're slicing your driver and you're pulling your wedges. That's what I would say. Because the loft on the wedge is going to straighten out the curve. It's going to take 1,300 RPMs and it's going to reduce that dramatically to, I'm going to say, probably five or 600 RPMs with a wedge. And to that end, the wedge spin is going to go up. And all of a sudden, when that goes up, now we get a little straighter shot. Instead of getting a massive curve like we got with the six iron that I'm hitting, now all of a sudden, you're going to get a little bit of a straight shot, which is going to feel like a pull because this right here indicates pull. Now watch what happens with this club. This club now all of a sudden, the ball is in the hosel of the club head right here. Look at where the ball is relative to the club head right there. You can see it's right in the hosel of the club. This is how you're hitting shanks, open club face, over the top. Why do you come over the top? Because your club face is open and you want to chase the ball. And so if my club face is open and it's going to go to the push side, I better make a huge pull move to offset that open face. Now we come down over here. Now watch where this is when this comes into the, into the golf ball, right about, these are sort of similar positions here. And now you can see that the golf ball is nowhere near the hosel. And as a result, I'm not going to shank that. This one, I took on the, the potential of a shank by doing what many of you are doing. Okay? Now, watch what happens when we get over here. Look at that thing. Look at those last three frames. Look at how they're going right across. 
You see that right there? That's why they call it a slice, because it's just a slice across the ball. That's where slice comes from. It's a slice across the ball. You're slicing this thing across the ball. So watch that club slice the ball right here. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that slice across the ball. And now the ball goes this way, and the club head goes like that. Now, let's go over here and watch what happens with this one. There's no slice across the ball. In fact, right here, ah, that was a terrible line. So right here, the club head and the golf ball are sort of in the same frame there. And the club head's still going to work to the inside. It's just not going to slice across to the inside. So I go back to this other thing. What, are the, what is the delivery position going to look like when the, the club is getting ready to strike, this, to strike this ball? Those are just different positions right there. Completely different positions, completely different club faces, completely different body motions, completely different shaft positions, all of it. So in the when you're working with the down the line view, what I want you to pay attention to is what's going on with the face in that halfway back position or whatever position you want to call that, we call a first parallel. What's that face look like? What's the face look like at the top? And then what does this look like as we come into the delivery position? Where's the shaft? Now, here's what you need to understand. If my shaft is going out to the push side, I need a closed face. If the shaft is going to the pull side, I need an open face. That's how you can control shot shape. That shot that I hit that had that massive movement to the, to the right, I can play that shot. The problem is, is that if I, I don't have that face as open as I have it, I'm hitting this thing into the woods on the left. So you have to realize, and this is the chicken or the egg thing, did you start making your swing because the face was in a poor position or were you making a bad swing and so you figured out how to get the face in a poor position? I don't know the answer to that, but I know that they have to marry with one another. If, I, if my path is going left, my face has to go right. If my path's going right, my face has to go to the left. And then I can play the game. Maybe not necessarily as well as I want to, but I can then play the game, okay? That's how I'm using for my two main shots, my face on shot, I'm looking at what's going on with my body, what's going on with the, the delivery position or, or the uh, impact position. That's what I'm paying attention to primarily in face on. And then in down the line, I'm paying attention to what does this face look like in the backswing? What's it look like at the top here? And what's, it, what's the shaft of the golf club look like it is or where is it in the delivery position? And if that is delivered, uh, with a with a push path, I better have that club face like that. And if I have a pull path, then I better have that club face in an open position. Okay? All right. Gregory, I've been talking nonstop for 35 minutes now. Now it's your turn. Let's get involved. Let's ask some questions. Okay? Okay. Uh, the very first one here. Um, hi, Michael. I'm having trouble addressing the club face before hitting the golf ball. Can you assist me on that? Thank you. Wow. So this is a hard one. Who's this from? This is from Peter. Peter. Addressing the club face. So how do we pay attention to getting the club face or, or uh, making the club face square, I guess, is the question. So let me show you. Let me show you how I do this. OK. I'm going to take. These two PVC pipes right here. OK. I'm going to put this like this, and then I'm going to set this like this, okay? So there you go. Now, Gibbsy, if you can give me a seven there, kind of close up on that. So we'll, we'll slide over to seven. There you go. Perfect. So now what I do is when I put my golf club in here, what I want to pay attention to is to make sure that this club face is perpendicular to this line right here. There's a good line, but let's go, let's go to a, uh, I don't know if you can bring a five close up now. So let's just pan down. That's wonderful. So what I'm going to do, go zipping right in there because this will be good. Get Yeah, get right in there. So what I'm going to do here is this. You see the leading edge right here. I want that leading edge to parallel this and be perpendicular to this. So I want my leading edge to be parallel to this. So what I do, 
And I pulled this in there so you could see that. So what I'm going to do is, and this is something I learned from one of my uh, students in the past, is I take the club face, I put the club face right up against this PVC pipe, and now I grip it. And now I come in here and I look to make sure that it's perpendicular to that. And now my club face is square there. And now I'm going to hit my shot. And that golf ball there, while I didn't have my alignment correct, that golf ball there only had a little bit of movement to the right. I pushed it to the right, but it didn't have a lot of curve to the right. It just had a little bit. And so what I did was I got my club face relatively square to where I wanted to go, although I didn't set my alignment sticks where I wanted them to, where I wanted the ball to start. And so what I, that's how I work on the face. And it's a really simple thing to do. You can also do that with a shoelace. And if you didn't get a chance to see what we, what we've done with our, we've got a whole shoelace thing going on. If, if you didn't get a chance to see what we're doing with that, again, just, just hang out on our, our channel here for a little bit and you can find out how we're using this shoelace to, to help you out. But let me, let me show you this little one that I'm doing here. So this goes like this. This goes like that. And then what I'll do is I'll take this thing and I'll bring this back like that. And then I go, I basically create a box like that. So what you can see now is I can put this ball in here like this. And now I make sure that my club face is right where I want it to be. And now I take that set up like this. And now I hit my shot. And again, a very, very good shot. Again, a little open face. That's where I tend to play. But the long and short of it is those are the two ways that I'm trying to figure out how to get my club face in the position that I want it to be in. Okay. All right, Peter, I hope that helps you out. Go ahead, Gregory. All right. This next one is from Chip. I don't have a teacher, so I don't have access to the system you have. Do you have a recommendation for an app that I can do this with on my phone? Yeah. And you know what, Chip, this is, honestly, this is, um, I'm, I'm proud to be with the partners that I'm with, right? And one of those partners is V1 and you can get the V1 app on your phone. I've got it on my phone, though my phone is not near me, but I have it on my phone and it works the same way as this. All the drawing tools are in there. And what I'll do is I, I'll get a, um, either a friend or a little stick and, and I've got some contraptions. When I go out to shoot, I use that, that, uh, v1 system and what i would tell you is just go mess around it's v1 sports go mess around with that that system and I, i'm telling you 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 don't need to have all the stuff that i have this all is, is looks really cool and everything but the truth of the matter is is that you can yeah there you go great idea you can just go and get that v1 golf app and when you have that v1 golf app you now have all of this at your fingertips and you can save your swings you can you can compare you can draw lines. There's also a nice, uh, there's a nice, I'm going to call them a batch, a group of golf swings from, you know, all these names that, that you see every single week that are playing PGA Tour, LPGA, uh, PGA Tour champions. All these swings are in there. So you can compare yourself against uh, individuals that maybe have the same height that you have or whatever it may be. But I like to use it to compare against what I'm doing. So I'm swinging well, it looks like this. When I'm not swinging well, it looks like this. It doesn't look like that. I want it to look like that. How do I get it to look like that? And then I go from there. Okay, good question, Chip. Appreciate that. All right, go ahead, Greg. Okay, Um. there's al also, I put a link in the chat to get oh, that great. app as well. Great. Um. If you missed, in case you missed what Gibbs you just put up there. This one from JNIM. When commentators on the broadcast talk about hitting it a groove low, is that indicative of attack angle or shaft lean? Uh, an issue result of an early release or perhaps not a good turn? Where does that issue come from? So this is, again, hitting a groove low. What they're talking about, Gibbsy, I don't know if you could take uh, a three and bring a three in here close up, but let's, let's, uh, let's see if you can do that. So pull that camera three. There you go. Wow, that happened fast. So, so these are the grooves. Typically, players on the PGA Tour are hitting sort of in this two to four range and when you hit it a little groove low it's, it's just it's what we would call thin now do they really hit it a groove low yeah probably what does it come from it can come from a variety of things 
It can come from a little bit of a slide in front. It can come from a little bit of a, of a stand up here, but not releasing the club, right? So in other words, what we call it hand activity. If I start chucking the club head up here, you're not going to hit it a groove low when you chuck the club head. You're going to hit it a groove low when you don't chuck the club head and you get in here like this. And most times what I see happens when people are hitting it a groove low is they, they, they really don't want to hit it to the pull side. So maybe there's a bunker over there or whatever. And what you'll see is when they come through, they'll kind of one hand will come off and the club, and then they're going to, they're going to give you the pose like this. And they go, gosh, I can't believe I got to watch this shot. So they stand there. I got to watch this shot. And they go, that was a terrible shot. And everybody at home is going, well, that was a terrible shot. He's right. He should stand like that because it was a terrible shot. It happens. Okay. But what, what it really does come from is it, it's almost a protection. It's an, it's a, it's a not allowing the, the club to swing properly. In tennis, you would call it pushing the ball. And that's really what it is. It's sort of a pushing of the ball. You're not really going through and exploding through and letting speed kind of act that way. That would be what it would be. Okay? This one from Mike. Uh, Michael, I see so much of my own swing in your slide versus turn comparison. The slide seems to happen instinctively for me. Is there any way to train myself to make a full turn instead of a slide? Yeah. So th that's a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful question. And what I like, I'll show you what I, what I like to do here. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use this device. I'm going to use these two devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this pipe. I'm going to put it on here like this. So what I like to do, set this thing up just like this. And now I've got I've got about a fist of space between my my um, hip and this pipe here. What I want to do when I make the swing is I want to feel my hip not hit this. Great shot, Gibbsy. So if I'm sliding, I'm going to hit that. What I want to do is I want my body to work away from that. Okay. And when my body is working away from that, now all of a sudden I'm going to turn properly. Let's go to a, a down the line view. When I start to turn from here, now all of a sudden you can see my whole chest. You can see my logo. If I slide here, you really can't see my whole chest. And if you go to the face on and I'm in this position, look at how my lower body has moved. It's, it's all hips, no rotation. All hip slide, no rotation. I want to rotate to here. So... What I'll do, and I won't use typically a pipe this long. I'll set in here like this, rotate, and then go. And now what I do, I don't really try to watch the ball as much as I, I try to feel what happened in my feet. What happened? Well, I feel like I've got more pressure on my lead foot. Of course you do, because you didn't slide back here and then swing from back here. That's going to lighten this foot, not make it heavy. So you get in here, you set this thing up like this, you feel this rotation, you come back down, all of a sudden you plant into that lead leg, and now we've got now we've got some weight on that lead foot. And now you go, okay, I got it, I got it. So now what you do, this is another great drill. You get yourself a seven iron, I'm gonna hit a six iron, you get a seven iron. And you lean that just like this, okay? And now what you wanna do is you wanna turn this hip so that the club, that's great, great shot. So if I turn my hips properly, you can see that's going to drop behind me. Now, go to face on. If I slide my hip like this, it's going to go right up my pocket of my, my pant. And when that starts to happen, it's going to get stuck. And in grass, it's going to get really stuck. And so what you want to do is you get set up here like this, and you want to turn this this way and let this fall behind you. So what we're going to do is, yes, no, no, go ahead. Stay on that one shot. Fine. No, no, the other one, my fault, bad, bad directions, just face up. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this way and this thing's going to go boom right behind me. It's not going to move up. You're not going to see the shaft change the angle. What you see is that thing's just going to fall behind me. So I'm in like this, rotate. And now all of a sudden I make a really good swing and I check my, my, my feel and my lead foot and my lead foot is heavy. My trail foot is light. If I, if I slide and swing here, my trail foot is heavy. My lead foot is light. So those two drills will help tremendously. And by the way, umbrellas can work nicely. Old shafts, if you've maybe gotten upset at, at hitting a bad shot that sliced off and you 
and and somehow the the head separated from the shaft. I don't know how, but somehow it did, because it happens. You can use that old shaft, stab it into the ground like that. It's coming out just like that pipe there, and then work on that that hip rotation. Okay, that old shaft, by the way, can be useful at times. You just gotta be careful. Don't cut yourself. All right, all right, Gregory, what do you got? Yeah, keep the grip end up uh, if you're using an old shaft. Yeah, and taping the thing up can help a lot too. Yeah, yeah, um, no question. From Kyle. Shaft gets steep in the downswing coming out of transition. I have to compensate by extending and coming out of it at impact. What's the best way to shallow out a transition and not have to save it at the end? Okay. So I'm going to give you a, this is Kyle. This is Kyle. Okay. So uh, Gibbsy, give me a, a down the line if you would. Okay. So. A steep shaft in the downswing, it basically looks like this, okay? A shallow is like this. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to find out anatomically, what am I doing? So I hold this like this, and then I go like this. What did I do? Well, what happened was my forearm rotated. My elbow actually shifted and moved in like that. And then I started to feel a little pinch on the outside part of my, my arm here. So Kyle, if you just do this and you go like this and you hold that right there, you're going to feel a stretch there. And that's going to tell you, okay, so that's how my body is working. Now, is this easy for you to do? Can you sit and hold this position for a while? If you can't, then maybe there's something going on with your body that's saying, I can't do this. And that's when I would say, go see a PT or go see somebody that can give you um, an, an idea of what's going on. We use Chris Finn at par for success. I think he's the best. He's got a self-evaluation. Just go parforsuccess.com. That's P A R the number four success.com slash breed. It's a free evaluation and it's a, it's a at home evaluation. So it's an assessment of what your body can and can't do. But in order for you to lay the shaft down, you have to be able to do this. That's the first thing, right? You got to find out if you can. And then when you can, now, all of a sudden, okay, so it's not my body that's not preventing me from doing this. It's something else. Maybe it's my mind that's preventing me from doing this. So my body's fine, but my, my mind is not. Or my, my mind and my body are saying, no, don't do it, right? It's a combination. So what I like to do is I like to have people hit with one arm. Don't make big swings here. Okay, now I'm going to show you through the use of my video camera here what happens when you do this so i hit that fat now when you do this right you lay this club down so here's the shaft of the golf club it's like this which is pretty good when this starts to go down, what you're going to see is when you lay it down, the handle is on that yellow line and the shaft is underneath it. The head is underneath it. So the handle is on it. Now it's just underneath it. But look at how much the head of the golf club is underneath that line. Now the club comes from the inside and now you hit it on the toe. It's one arm. Don't expect a lot out of yourself here, okay? Now. What you do is you get used to what that feels like. So the club goes back with the with the trail hand and you start to go down like this and this club starts going this way. Well, elbow is moving in front of the, the wrist. So that's what's happening. The wrist is now kind of hanging back and pointing up to the sky a little bit. So as we start to come down here and lay the shaft down, now all of a sudden I feel like, okay, I can't feel my hand, but I can feel my elbow. So now... You make a couple of rehearsals. I'm going to tape this because I just want to see what happens here, okay? I want to see if I can really lay this down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this, and as I come through, I'm going to let that elbow get in front here. Okay, so that definitely laid down because that ball started way, way right. So here we go. So let me just, I'm going to draw... And I, I don't do this a lot, but I do this in this situation. I'll draw a shaft plane line. Club's going to go back. Now when we start down, you can see the shaft now laying down right here. Look at that thing laying down. 
That's the elbow moving in front, and it has a huge effect on what's happening with the wrist. And now all of a sudden, the head of the golf club is underneath the plane. The club face is opened up. It's way under the – look at that delivery position right there. That is going to go way out to the push side because that shaft laid down so much. So that drill works. So here's what I would tell you. Simple thing to do. Start with that with that one-arm trail arm swing only and get a feel of what that's doing. That's after you've gone to get the assessment of what your body can and can't do. Because I can tell you till I'm blue in the face of what your body needs to do, but if your body can't do it, if you can't externally rotate, go to a, a down the line shot here, Gibbsy. So when I stand here, I will eva I'll, I evaluate my students and I go, okay, I just want to see you take your hand and put it back like that. Now I can I can externally rotate because I was a pitcher, I was a shortstop, I was a quarterback. Like uh, this, this is not a difficult position for me. Now, many of you can't do that. Many of you can just get to here. And then when you get into a position where you're bent over and you go like this, you can't let this thing get to perpendicular. It doesn't get to perpendicular. You don't have that external rotation. And so all of a sudden I'm telling you, well, this is what you need, but your body is going, yeah, that's fine. You, yeah, but no. Yeah, no, not going to happen. And so go che check and see what your body can do. And then when you find out you can, now we can work on things that you need to do to lay that, that shaft down, okay? All right, go ahead. Just out of curiosity, if you can't, do you work around it or do you go get it? No, yeah. If you can't do it, then I, my my recommendation is just quit playing golf. Don't worry about working around it or anything. We're gonna we're just gonna stop playing. No, of course, what we have to do is we've got to figure out how to work around it. And what are the things that you can do to work around it? Well, you go get it trained and you you, you figure out how to do it. You do little drills by hitting one handed, and you get used to that. And eventually, you kind of you get your body to to um, start to improve. That's what you do. The workaround to me is is I'm not a big fan of if my body can't do something, I want to fix what's in my body so that I can do what I want to do. I don't want to have to stand over a golf shot. Imagine having to stand over a golf shot your entire life trying to convince your, your body to do something that it can't do and do it with your mind. And you just get stuck on this one swing thought. You eventually, honestly, you eventually will quit the game because you're just going to go, my body can't do it. And it's not fun. And so what you got to do is you got to go, hey, it's I'm never too old to start. And so let's start. Let's work on what we got to work on to get our body in the position that we need to get it into so we can hit the golf ball and improve. And when you do this, you will improve. I promise you. All right, go ahead. All right, this one from Sam. Is the camera lined up on the target line? No, that's a wonderful question. So he's talking about down the line here. It's a wonderful question. So when I put the camera where I want and I get set up, the camera sits right on the edge of where the grip and the shaft meet. So when I set up here, that you should not be able to, to I'm too far away. So it would be about here. Yeah, you, you barely can see that, that part right there. Now, that's me being a little precise. There are some people that like to shoot on what we call the toe line. I'm okay with that. I, I would say more than, more than where you have it, and I'm very particular about where I have it, but more than where you have it, it's consistently putting it in the same spot every time. Same height, same angle, same positioning on both the down the line, and of course, in the face on. So I'm I'm much more into be consistent with what you're doing in the positioning of the cameras, and then we can match things to one another. But if you're off by a little bit, you, you're off by a lot. And when you're off by a lot, you're analyzing or matching to something that's not the same. And the next thing you know, you might be fixing a problem that isn't really a problem. Okay. All right, go ahead, Greg. Okay, this one from Barker. I've uh, been working on shallowing the club on my downswing. Yeah. Uh, and have went to a stronger grip. Now I'm having a big problem topping the ball. Uh, I'm, I'm standing up too soon and I'm not sure why. Okay. So shallowing the golf club is an important thing. It, obviously it can be too, too excessive. Okay. And, and it's become a fad to, to work on shallowing the golf club. Um, and what I would say is, is that if you look at the players on the PGA tour, they don't really, I mean, they're, they're pretty much, 
predominantly hitting cuts, at least the people that are that are kind of, uh, you know, in that top 10. Now you got some players that are like Rory who, you know, sometimes overshallow the club. And when you overshallow the club at that level, you can hit some shots that can go way out to the to the push side. So I believe in shallowing. I don't I just overshallowing is is almost as detrimental, maybe even more detrimental than coming over the top, because now you've got to take a when you start to shallow, you can actually believe it or not, when you start to shallow, you can open up that club face. Whereas when you come over the top, it's very difficult for you to completely shut it. You can get it square to the path and hit a pull, but it's it's very rare that you're over the top and your club face is dead shut. It's not that uncommon for you to get sha too shallow and have the face open up dramatically and hit these things that are Sheriff Wainwright. And so what I would say is, is that I would experiment with just going back to not shallowing and see if your if your impact uh, improves, if your if your um, shot shape improves. Now, to that end, if you're shallowing the amount that you want and you're not able to to strike the ball solidly, then what I would do is I would I would set up a little device, something like this. You put the ball in here, and I would imagine in your mind that you're shallowing, but you're trying to let this club get into this path because when you're shallowing and you're topping the club is coming too much from in here and you can do it with a shoelace as well it's highly effective with that as well i just grabbed this because it's easier to set up and so what i would do is i would work on taking the club and feeling the club go that way and there's a pressure that's going to happen from your hand on the side of the grip where you feel like you're actually putting pressure on so we'll call it the east side of the grip so for me, it's north, south, east, and west, okay? So I'm going to put pressure on the east side of the grip in a downward direction. And when I do that here, now all of a sudden the club is right down that line. And all of a sudden you'll lay the shaft of the golf club down, but you'll strike the, the, the golf ball first. That would be what I would tell you to do, okay? All right, go ahead, Gregory. Okay, this one is from Jay. My pro says my path comes too much from the inside, causing a hook, and that I should swing more to the left. When I ask how to do that, he just says, swing more to the left. <laughs> how do I do that? He put it in quotes. <laughs> All right. Listen, I totally sympathize with this, right? How do you do it? Well, you just, just do it. Okay. Thanks. Do I pay for that? Do I actually pay for that? that do wisdom? more. What? Do more. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what you do. Give me, uh, give me a, uh, a seven close up down on the ground there, if you would. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to set up these tees just like this. Now, they're going across this way. But also what you can see is that this tee is on the line of the golf ball. And then this tee is about where the golf ball is. What I want to do, and, and let's go face on for just a second. What, what happens to people when they say swing more left is you start thinking about going through the ball. You don't think about going to the golf ball. And frankly, going to the golf ball is more important than going through the golf ball when you're starting to feel like, air quotes, swing left. And so what you have to do is you have to make sure that the golf club is getting out here. Now go to the, the down line. The golf club is getting out here so that you can swing left. It's kind of like it's kind of like you're trying to get off of uh, a major highway and the exit ramp is on the right and you're in the in the fast lane and there's cars everywhere. You just aren't going to get off the highway at that point. You're in the wrong lane. And so no matter how much you like, you want to go this way, you ain't, as they, as they famously said in Caddyshack, you ain't getting no Coke. You're not getting, you're not getting off the highway. Okay. What you got to do is you got to make sure that you get in the right lane, the right most lane so that you can exit. So what I like to do is I like to take this thing and I just like to swing slowly this way. We're going to record this. Okay. So that you can get a look at this. So this is a great drill. And I'm sure you're asking how far behind that is. I've got it just about two or three club heads. That's that's where you are. But anyway, this goes like this. So we're out here like this, and then we're going that way. Now, watch what happens to the club 
when we start to, to go. So this club is now working way out over the top. That's the influence of these two tees. Club is, there's my pull, there's my pull. So you can see a lot of that club shaft right now. Now watch what happens to this club. This is starting to come from the outside and then swinging across to the left. That's what happens. So the influence of the tees, now all of a sudden I get the club out here. And when the club is out here, now it can go over there. But if it's in here like this, I can't go over there. If I'm in here like this, it's so hard for me to go left, I'm gonna hurt myself. You gotta get out here to get in there. So make sure you get out there. Get in the right lane so you can get off the highway, okay? All right, go ahead, Greg. This All right, is this, awesome. This, I hope you guys, by the way, I'm not kidding. I hope you guys are having as much fun as we are. This is, we love doing this. And so thank you all so much for, for watching us and for following all the things that we've got going on. We're trying to help you play better golf and also maybe laugh or smile at least while you're going through these uh, these learning experiences. All right, go ahead. Yeah, one or two max smiles. Yeah, that's it. Uh, There's a limit. Great questions here, by the way, too. This one from Thomas. Uh, I can't get off my back foot. I try to push off, but I have trouble sliding my hips uh, and the push in sequence. Okay, so th this is simple. Like getting off of your right foot is a, is a hard thing for you to do, right? So how do we do that? Well, simple drill here, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to step up and lift, go through and lift. Step up and lift. Go through and lift. And as you start to do this, add a little turn to it. So now we're turning back like this, turning through like this. And then after you've done that for a while, now you're going to feel like your feet are coming up. So you're going to feel like your lead foot's coming up, but it's not. And then you're going to come through and you're going to feel like your trail foot's coming up, but it's not. And what you start feeling is you start feeling the upper body moving. Instead of trying to do it with your lower body, do it with your upper body. And all of a sudden, what you start to get is you start to get upper body back upper body through weight is forward trail foot is in the air simple 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 drill the other thing that you can do is make swings on downhill lies create downhill lies for yourself we we fortunately in our in our uh morgan franklin transformation center i can transform this floor i can lift this greg do we want to show them how how this could work now let's not do that we don't have a lot of time left but we can lift this floor up maybe what we'll do is we'll do an uneven lie thing if you all are interested in that next week but this this can go up into the air and i can have a downhill lie and so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make swings on that downhill lie because the because now gravity is going to want to go down that hill there so anytime you're out playing find a downhill lie and make swings down that hill and you'll start to get a feeling of having that trail leg be really really light okay all right, go ahead. This one's from Michael. I have picked up distance with driver uh, with a slight fade, but not with irons. Sometimes I pull irons hard left. Am I flipping or over the top? Well, it, you know what it is to me? It's, it's, it's even before that, right? Because flipping and over the top are in, that's, that's your golf swing. That's, that's in swing. Well, let's go to pre-swing. What can we do to, to solve that? Well, I think what happens to you is, is that you're delivering too much loft in that club head. And when you deliver too much loft in the club head with an iron, you lose distance. So how do you solve that? Move, move the ball back. Move the ball back. Move the ball back. So get in here like this. The ball position goes back. I'm going to go back even more like this. Now I'm really back. Now go. Now I hit that shot, and what do I get? I get a golf ball that's moving at 120 miles an hour. All of a sudden, my, my long strike, very solid strike. Look at that. There's 181, 120.4. We round up around here. And the point being, move the ball back, because that one launched at 16.7 degrees. My normal launch angle is, as I said, like 17, 18. It'll be in that neighborhood. But I get a little lower launch angle. If I go even more, okay? I'm going to go back here. Now it's outside of my foot. Now watch what happens with this launch angle. Come on up to the front. Gibbsy, go to four. Bring it on up. Let's have a little fun up here. And check out 14 and a half. 14 and a half, a miss hit. 14 and a half, a miss hit. 20, 120.4.
Just move the ball back a little bit. I promise you, no pulls. You see how that started four degrees to the right? No pulls. Okay, go ahead, Gregory. Okay, this one from Kyle. Do you have any thoughts on using the same iron shaft in wedges, um, but soft stepping up to an eight iron? Wow. So this is a, so Kyle's a player because soft stepping is not a, uh, a line that we hear a lot. And basically he's just, it's, it's how you cut a shaft and, and put it into the, into the head to make it perform a certain way. What I would say is this, I wouldn't soft step up to the eight iron and then all of a sudden go regular to the seven. I would have all my irons be the same thing. What I might do is I might take the same shaft and soft step the wedges. And the reason why you would do that is, is that you're rarely going out of wedge full bore. If you're going out of wedge full bore, what you're saying to, to yourself is, I don't really like hitting partial wedges. And so what I would do is I would just soft step the wedges and I wouldn't worry about um, you know, doing that with the irons. That would be what I would tell you. And if you have a gap, just get another wedge, fill the gap. Don't worry about trying to, to figure out how to swing a little harder and be worried about, well, if I soft step it, then it's not going to act the same way and I'm going to get too much spin. And just get another wedge, okay? So soft step the wedges. Don't worry about the eight and nine iron. Okay, this one from Steve. Uh, during the winter, I like to catch up on some reading. Could you please recommend a couple of go-to books on the short game? Uh, what are your go-tos? Thanks, Steve. Um, so on the short game, this is always an interesting question. I think Stan Utley's um, stuff in short game is, is really, really good. I think Seve's stuff is fantastic. Raymond Floyd's stuff is is uh, excellent as well. I think um, I think there are books that if you go back and you get some books from um, other other generations, like Sam Sneed's stuff, Billy Casper's stuff, what they did when they wrote their books was that it was all encompassing. They weren't really they didn't like major in short game. Um, they just included short game in their how to play golf. Right. And so what, what I would suggest is don't be afraid to get books from, from individuals that are maybe not even on the planet right now. Their wisdom is still very good and very useful. I think, um, I think there's, there's a lot of books that, touch on short game stuff that when you put it all together, you can gain some, some real, real wisdom and, and insight. But if you want to get one book, I, I think, I think Stan Utley's short game book is, is uh tremendous, tremendous. That's the art of short game. That's correct. Um, yeah, I agree. Phenomenal. All right. This one from Paul in Costa Rica at the moment, it is dry season and the entire course is hard pan. Uh, what adjustments do you make on hard pan? Um, well, I, if, if, if it's hard pan, then I'm definitely playing a lower shot off the tee. So I want that thing running like crazy. But it, it, if I have a, if I have an effect, what, what we're talking about is being able to strike the ball first. Right. And so gives you, give me a down the line view. If you could, what, what I like to do when I've, I've got, uh, these types of, of conditions, if my normal distance to the ball is here what I'll do is I'll just stand a little closer to the ball and then grip down on the club and my golf swing will naturally get a little bit more upright. And then I can come down on that ball a little bit more solidly. Now it will launch lower. That one that I just hit gives you, I don't know if you can go over to the, to the ball data, but what you can see over there is look at the vertical launch. See this vertical launch right here. That one there went to 15.4. And so when I when I move a little closer to the golf ball, what will end up happening is I'll get a steeper angle of attack, which will allow me to hit that golf ball uh, first. It will create a low shot. It will create a low apex. That one only apexed at 71 feet. So it will bring everything down, but you will strike the golf ball first. And then to that end, what I would tell you is, is that you know, if, if I'm if I'm concerning myself with with hitting that golf ball first, I want to make sure that I'm keeping my trail elbow bent as long as I can and getting out, straightening it out past the golf ball. So when we get in here, now I'm gonna now I'm definitely gonna hit that golf ball first, and I'll get a lot more distance. 
And you'll see that one there. That was a really good strike. I didn't lose apex on that one. That one went to 93 feet. So those would be the two things that, that, that I would suggest. Either stand a little closer or really focus on keeping that trail elbow bent and then straightening it out past the golf ball. And what that will do is that will lift the club head off the ground just a little bit more as it comes through the strike. And you'll kind of hit it as, as one, uh, one viewer asked earlier about um, the one groove low. You'll hit it a little bit lower on the club head and you'll, you'll find ball first contact. This one's from Sam. All right, let's make this one from Sam, our last question. Okay. Okay. Um, this is, he says, love these topics. I hope you can talk about analyzing early extension. So I'll tell you this, Sam, and I hate to be this guy, okay? But Greg, this is what we're going to do next week. Next week, we're going to talk about early extension. Because early extension is a, is a, a conversation that is, it's so in depth and there's so many factors that go on in it that it wouldn't, I wouldn't give this justice if I spoke for it for two minutes. I wouldn't give it justice if I spoke to it for 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's a solid 20 plus minute conversation. And so what I want to do, Sam, if you'll indulge me is we're going to take that question. We'll save that question for next week. And we'll talk a little early extension so that you can understand it because a lot of it has to do with things that, you really don't even know that it has to do with. Okay, so we'll talk early extension. So that will bring us to the end of, of our time together. Let me just remind you of a couple of different things too. First, this poker chip ball marker that we have that's blessed. Love these things. They're six bucks. Send any, If you want any of these, send an email to me at anubreedagolfatmichaelbreed.com. Also too, by the way, make sure to join me as we go to these North Coast golf shows. If you happen to be in Philadelphia, Washington, or New York, go over to north coast golf and travel shows and you'll see um the the dates i'll be in philadelphia this coming saturday next saturday in washington dc actually uh outside in chantilly i believe it is uh in the reston area and then uh be in new york um in march so those are the three golf shows that i'm going to be i'm going to be uh talking to the other thing that i want to remind you of is make sure you join us here each and every week tell your friends like our stuff, follow us here on uh, on on my uh, YouTube channel. We're trying to grow this um, community like we've grown the community on Sirius XM. Uh, we're trying to grow this community. So make sure you, you continue to follow and like and tell others. Uh, and you'll get all the information when we send out our, our information uh, blasts to let you know what we're going to discuss. Next week, we are going to discuss early extension. Um, let me uh, allow my good friends to to say goodbye, Steve Gibbs and Greg Ducharme. And thank you guys all for the hard work that you guys do every single week. Appreciate yeah. it so much. And I know everybody who's watching appreciates it. I'm Michael Breed. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next week.